not. <laughs> Behold, I bring you good news of a messiah. Ye shall find the babe. <clears throat> By um, logging on, just go to the church website. But also, you can you can come to the Christmas Eve services that we will be, you know, safe and everything. Yeah, we're just social distancing, just, you know, trying to take care of each other. Social distancing? Why are you still standing there? Grab your laptop and log on! Or head to the church, if that's your preference, and celebrate the birth of Jesus! <laughs> I'll socially distance, but I'm going to church. I'm gonna go to my mom's house! She's got the fastest internet in town. Well, good morning and welcome as we gather here in the season of Advent. Just a reminder, Christmas is around the corner. And our plans here at Holy City are to offer, just as we've been offering for the last number of months, both in person and online Christmas Eve worship. It's also a great opportunity to invite someone, whether you're coming with them in person, wearing the mask and social distancing, or inviting them to join online and celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, the one who gives us hope in the midst of life, especially in the midst of 2020. Well, as we gather here this morning and we welcome you, just want to encourage you with the connection card. It's so important you fill those connection cards out. Our vision as we've been working through this time of 2020 and this COVID time is to communicate, connect, and care. And filling out those connection cards is so important. And this is a little new thing. It's a QR code. So if you're at home or even if you're here in worship, you can take your phone out if you've got a smartphone like I do. Open the camera app because most of those will do that now. And you can actually zoom in. Take a picture of that, or it will automatically take a picture, and it'll send you directly to our connection cards. I really just encourage you to do those connection cards because it helps us know that you've been here, especially the folks that are joining us live stream. And unless you've made a comment, we don't know that you've been here. It's a way that we can continue communicating, connecting, and caring for one another so that we know that we are connecting and sharing Christ's love and also an opportunity where you can share any prayers that you have as well. All right, well, just a reminder, today is a communion Sunday, the first Sunday of the month, second Sunday of Advent, so we'll lit two purple candles today. As we gather here today as well, we'll have communion here for those in person. If you're joining us live stream, we encourage you to come through our drive through communion time. We shorten that time up just a little bit for the winter months, even though it's not officially winter yet, but for the month of December and for the next several months, we'll do from 1 to, or 1, sorry, noon to 2 p.m., and just a little time, the worship time together, or service together, a little time to pray together, and of course, offer you the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Also, coming up today, we have a voters meeting on Zoom at 1120, so that information went out, so you should have that in your email, go in there, log on. If you're in the waiting room, which is where you might be, if I'm not logged on yet, because I'm the host, so just be patient until I get there and I start letting people in. Also, we have coming up... In our season here, our theme for the weekends is Christmas Isn't Canceled. So that's our focus today, our second in this series. And then our Wednesday nights is a skit guy theme, the glory of Christmas. We've got a skit guy video. We're watching their skits, and we're fo focusing on those characters that are part of the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. And then just a heads up, next Sunday is the third Sunday of Advent. It's the second Sunday of December. If you've been part of Holy Savior for a while, you know the second Sunday of December, usually the late service, is the Children's Christmas Program. Well, with COVID, I don't know if you quite call it a program, but a number of the kids wanted to put something together, so we've got a little video presentation that will be our message. It's the Christmas story, and we're going to sing a number of Christmas carols and hymns. So just encourage you in person, join us live stream, because it's going to be a great time to sing a lot of you know, extra songs we haven't been singing for this Christmas celebration, and we're going to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, now it's time for you to, you know, if you haven't already did the connection cards, did you do the connection cards? Do the connection cards. Let's say hello, let's greet one another in the name of Jesus. Good morning, family. I just realized that I've been here almost a little over 24 years. 
So I've already, you already are a part of my family. I've seen some of you get married. I've seen some of you have children. From, I've seen those children grow up and drive cars and have kids of their own. So I've been here a long time. So when I say I love you, I really mean it. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we enter the Christian season, Christmas season, we ask that your Holy Spirit motivate us to serve the Lord with love and joy. Jesus, fill our hearts with genuine love for our church family and for all others. As we go out into the world, help us create an environment that causes others to seek out you as their Savior and Lord. Lord, please accept our songs of praise to you because we love you and trust you so much. Amen. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Well, this morning we continue our series, Christmas Isn't Canceled. Again, just a great title for this year, 2020, for the season of Advent as we focus on the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. The season of Advent, the second Sunday in Advent, that second purple that we get to light next weekend, we light the pink candle. As we talk about Advent, I just want to see, you know, when you think about Advent, what comes to mind? You think of Advent, you know, how would you describe Advent? You might think about the candles. You might think about some of those Advent hymns, like we sang, Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. I mean, I, I love, this one of my favorite hymns. I love that hymn. Great prayer about God and his arrival. Again, that's what the word Advent means, is arrival or coming. Maybe you think about getting the Christmas decor out or having an Advent calendar. You're counting the days down. When you think about Advent, you might think about some of the other traditions that you might have. But when I think about it, what really comes to mind when I think about Advent is I think about pizza. 
Pizza. How many of you think about Evan and you think about pizza? Yeah, most of you, I mean, and probably at home too, they're all like shaking their heads here. They're like, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, you know, I, I think about pizza because, well, you know, when you, you order pizza, there's a sense of anticipation, right? There's a sense of, of wanting and, and longing. And, and the season of Advent is about that sense of anticipation, of that wanting, that longing for something wonderful. Of uh, that, that hope that when that pizza arrives, when it comes, there is something that is just great and wonderful to share. And, and that, in many ways, it's a lot like Advent, isn't it? A lot like a pizza. And speaking of pizza, here's kind of the question I have for you to kind of grease your wheels a little bit this morning. Is what kind of pizza do you love? I heard you know, someone said pepperoni. You know, and, and you know, by the way, my family had pizza last night because I wanted a pizza box so that I could hold it up here this morning. But also because I love pizza. You know, I, I could eat pizza probably once a week, especially really good pizza. This is from, you know, the Mellow Mushroom, so mm, that was good pizza. Love pizza. I mean, you might love pizza that's something really simple like cheese pizza. Or you might like pizza that's got like everything on it, you know, all the, the veggies, mushrooms and onions and bell peppers. Or maybe you like, you know, completely just a veggie pizza. Or maybe you like the meat lovers that's just piled full of meat. Or maybe you like something kind of crazy. You know, I went to school with my wife and I did. It's where we met in Portland, Oregon. I remember one time we had pizza with smoked oysters. It was good. And I saw you going like, oysters? No, no, no. Pizza? No, no. But it really was. I mean, you can do some crazy things with pizza. But, you know, you know my favorite, the pizza that I really love, and someone here had said it, I really love pepperoni pizza. That's my favorite. A really good, spicy pepperoni pizza. It's just, oh, you know, just how many are hungry right now for pizza? Yeah. You know, I, I do, and I, I think about pizza, and I think about Evan, and I think about things that I love. I love pizza. I love a good pizza, and, and just waiting for that pizza to come and, and, and to eat that and enjoy that, it reminds me of Evan. It reminds me of things that I love. But, you know, the way that I love pizza is not the same way that I love my wife. That's probably good, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's, probably, that's really good. You know, I, I, I love my wife in a much different way. I mean, when I talk about, you know, the love that I have for pizza, it's not the same kind of love that I have for my wife. The love that I have for my wife is the love that I want to have a personal relationship with her. I don't want to have a personal relationship with my pizza. I just want to eat it. And I'm hungry, and it smells good, and it tastes good. But my wife, that kind of love, is, is not only a love that I want to have this personal relationship, it's a love that I want to put into action. I, I, I want to do things. I want to better things for my wife, you know, because of the love that I have for her and, and the love that she has for me. I mean, that's a different kind of love. And you think about that. When someone says that they love you, maybe you start thinking, okay, what kind of love is that? Is that like a pizza love, you know, or is that like a love love? And as we talk about Advent, you know, we're going to talk about love. That's what Paul is getting at as he talks about love. He talks about love that love is willing to do. Love is action. Love has energy into it and lives and breathes. So let's take a look and let's read together these words from Romans 12, 9. We read, let love be genuine. It's a really short portion of that verse, right? Let love be genuine. Let your love be sincere. Let your love be real, genuine, sincere love, not pizza love. But the kind of love that says, I'm going to put this love into action. The word that Paul uses here, he's using a, a verb here. And so he's using a verb meaning that it is a doing thing. Love is a doing thing. When we say that we love, you know, we are doing, we are expressing and living out that love. Now, often when Paul talks about this love and this love particularly that we have for one another, as Dale said, you know, we are a church family. We're, we are our brothers and sisters in Christ. As we talk about this law that we have for the community and the world in which we live, you know, Paul often uses a Greek word, you know, called phileo. Maybe you've heard that word before. It's where you get like Philadelphia from, you know, the city of brotherly love. Phileo. This is brotherly kind of love, this kind of family love for one another. But Paul changes the word here in Romans 12, 9. He uses the Greek word, and many of you may know this word, he uses the Greek word agape. In all other places that Paul has used this word, he's talked about God's love for us. 
Agape is that unconditional, unending love that God has for you, for me, for the world. Let's take a look at Romans 12, chapter 5, verse 8. Let's read this together. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God demonstrates his love. God doesn't just say, I love you. God doesn't say, I love you with a pizza love, thankfully. God says, I love you. And he demonstrates that love by sending Jesus. That Jesus came into our world. We're getting ready to celebrate his birthday in a matter of days. Hopefully you're getting Christmas shopping done. We're going to celebrate his birth. We're going to celebrate God's love for us and God's love for the world. He sent his son Jesus so that Jesus would live the life that we can never live. And then he would die for the life that we do live and rise again to life. Not because we were pretty good, almost good. Not because we're better than those other people over there. Christ died for us. He died for you and for me while we were still what? Sinners. Rebellious. We did not deserve God's love. Yet that's God's love. God's love is an undeserved, unending love. Again, Paul talks about this love, and he, he poses this in, in a question as he talks about God's love for us, God's love for you. Let's read together Romans 8, 35. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or are destitute or in danger or threatened with death? And this question, man, more often you see the translation, can anything separate us from God's love? And Paul's answer is ultimately no. But with this verse, particularly for 2020, it just kind of nails it for us. Because all of us have felt 2020, the strain of 2020, you know, between the pandemic and, and social and civic unrest and, and maybe even disputes and, and, and with our family and disagreements there and, and politics and all that just kind of mixed together. And then some of us are getting some economic, you know, challenges going on and health issues going on. It's made it for a crazy, difficult, challenging time. And sometimes maybe we even think that. Does God really love me? Look at my life. But Paul reminds us, that no matter how bad, how difficult, how challenging, how hard it is, nothing can separate you from God's love in Jesus Christ. God's love for you. So when Paul talks about this love, and let's go back to Romans 12, 9. I'm going to read this again. Let's read this. Let love be genuine. He's talking about not this brotherly love but the love that God has for us, that God's love is shaping our love for one another and our love for the world. And depending on the translation that you may read as you read Romans, particularly Romans 12, you know, there's upwards of about 30 different imperatives, kind of like commands. And as Paul gives these imperatives, these commands, these imperatives and these commands, you know, they don't earn us God's love. Because God loves us because of Jesus Christ. Loves us even though we were still in our sin. These imperatives are commands. Paul is saying, look, this is how we are to pattern our life. If we're going to be followers of Jesus, this is how his love shapes us. His love shapes us that we love one another as we have been loved by God. We love one another with an unconditional, unending love. Not only the love for those that we like, but even for those that we maybe don't like or don't like so much. We all have those kind of people that we don't like so much. Think about it this way. Think about Forrest Gump. Could have brought another box up here. Because Forrest Gump would say life was like a box of what? Chocolates. Okay, if you had a box of chocolates and you opened up that chocolate, I mean, how many of you would eat every single piece of that chocolate? Some of you would. But most often, and there's a mixture of different kinds of chocolate, what do we do? You know, we, we either look at the lid to see where's the ones that I like. Those are the ones I'm going to eat, and you can have the ones I don't like. Or if you do one of those things where you don't know what they are, you buy it, and you, like, kind of throw it away. You wrap it up in clean if you don't eat it. Or maybe you say to someone else, here, you eat this. But, you know, the world is like a box of chocolates. Our community of Lincoln is like a box of chocolates. Our, our congregation is like a box of chocolates. Because there's all kinds of different people. And, and there's some that maybe we more easily love, but we're called to love them all, even the people 
that are difficult. Even the people that we maybe would consider enemies, they think, they look, behave differently than what we would. We are called to love them. To reflect the love that God has for us, for you in Jesus Christ. Let your love be genuine. Part of letting that love be genuine is the love that's lived out. We do that as we collected water bottles for our three of our community schools and the hoodies and the winter coats as we collected items for Thanksgiving baskets and gave those away. We do those, those kind of things. Those are ways that we live out that love. As we care for one another, we live out that love. As we forgive one another, we live out that love. And as even Paul says, to bring peace into a conflicted world is living out his love. Loving those in our family and loving those in the world as God loves us, as he loves you in Jesus. So here's our challenge for this, this week and really for this Advent season. What small action can you take this season to put Jesus' love into action? One small thing that you can do this season to put Jesus' love into action. Again, Jesus' love is an unconditional, unending love. And his love is not only for those that he liked and those who deserved it, because none of us deserve his love. His love was even for us while we were still sinners, enemies of God. So whether it's someone that you do like a lot, someone you like a little, someone you don't know, maybe even someone you don't like at all, we are called to love. For the love that Jesus has for us. Even as we hear in the scriptures, beloved, let us love one another. And that they will know that we are his followers. We are Christians by our what? By our love. Let's put that love into action. By God's power, by his spirit working in us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the gift of your amazing grace and love. A love that you have for us, even while we were still sinners, even while we were still your enemies, you sent Jesus Christ into our world to live, to die, and to rise again. Lord, if we're honest, especially this year, it's been harder to love some people. And yet you call us to love. You call us to love the way that you love us. Lord, we, to be honest, we can't do that on our own. It takes your grace and love in us. It takes the Holy Spirit working in us. And it can often takes a lot of work in us, Lord. So we pray, open our hearts for your love to fill our hearts and for that love to overflow into the life of others through our words and our actions. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. At this time, we'll profess our faith in this God of love in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we come before God to confess our sins together. Lord Jesus, our lives are filled with sin. We get caught up in the pressures and stresses of the holiday season, pursued by the temptation to spend our funds, energy, and spirits. We feel that there is no peace or rest in the world. We at times have denied you by what we have said and done. We forget our neighbor's needs and do not love you above all else. Forgive us, Jesus, and help us follow where you lead us as we wait to your coming. In your name we pray. Amen. We hear God's, promise, hear God's promise of grace and forgiveness. The good news of heaven is that Jesus has come into the world, has led the way through death that we may have life, and is coming again to make all things new. 
Hear these words of assurance from Romans 5. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. This time we continue with our tithes and offerings. Again, a number of different ways you can give. One of those ways you can give is through our checks or cash. You go to holycv.org. You can drop it off of here, here in person. You go to 84321 for text giving. And then the other was that QR code, which again, if you're at home or even here in person, even when we get back to doing things in a more regular basis once the vaccine is fully rolled out, you can simply take your phone, take a picture with that QR code to bring up that online giving, and you can give that way because some of us, again, don't carry cash or check much anymore. And so it's just an easy way to simplify some of that giving, especially, again, while a lot of us are worshiping at home, to make that easy for you. And if you do the online giving, you know, there's always a fee. If you're able to or like to, you can cover part of that fee. That's an option there. I give online a number of times, not only to Holy Savior, but to other places. And I like to support those organizations by covering the couple cents or a couple dollars of a fee that comes along with that. All right. Well, let's, as you think about that, we're going to have a video to kind of just get us reflecting and thinking about the gifts and resources that God gives us and how we respond to his gift of love. Christmas presents are exciting. Do you remember what you'd say is the best gift you've ever received at Christmas? I asked my kids this question, and here's what they said. My six-year-old loved her little talky doll that could talk, blink, and not much else. It cost a whopping $110 after tax, and it lasted for a solid eight months before it found its way to the back of her closet. My nine-year-old said his favorite was the popular fantasy book series, six books in all, each getting progressively longer. The set cost $58 and lasted eight weeks before it lived its final dust-filled existence on a shelf. Now my tween loved the Brainy Putty collection that cost $32 and lasted a measly eight days before it went to live in our carpet. Finally, my teenage son wanted the ultimate drone with a 4K camera. It cost the most and lasted the shortest amount of time. I'd like to say it lasted eight minutes, but no, it was eight seconds, which is only impressive in bull riding. As exciting as those gifts are, what if there was a gift at Christmas that was far better? In fact, so much better that it makes these look like, well, toys. What if this gift was worth so much that no one could buy it for you, nor could you afford it? What if it was something of extreme value, like, say, life itself? And what if this gift was given through the birth of a baby who became our paid in full? That's the gift offered to all. It costs us nothing, him everything. It lasts just a bit longer than eight seconds, eight days, eight weeks, or even eight months. It lasts forever. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of hope that comes through Jesus. Jesus, we praise you for your love that reaches out to all who are hurting and broken. This morning, we lift up those that are on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts. We pray for Tom as he goes through physical therapy to gain back his mobility, for Jill, whose surgery has temporarily been put on hold, and for Luella as she recovers from her recent surgery. Lord, our will is that you would heal all those in our prayers. But Lord, not our will, but your will be done. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
We pray we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the gift that we are about to receive. Refresh us with your love, that we may love as we have been loved by you. We pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he, he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ, broken on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. And take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Lord God, we thank you for this gift of love. We pray again that this love would shape and strengthen our love. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and to life everlasting. Depart in peace knowing that all your sins have been forgiven you. Now please stand for the blessing. Go into the world confident in God's presence with you. Bring the words and actions of peace to our community and our world. And the blessing of God the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Come O long expected Jesus, born to set your peace. Christmas can be a difficult season for many reasons, especially this year with COVID-19. Loss, separation, illness, uncertainty. If you or someone you know is finding this Christmas a challenging time, Holy Savior has created a resource for you. A brief, personal guided experience, a time of reflection, a time to recognize that things are not always merry and bright that there is grief and darkness, but in Jesus, there is hope. Well, again, it's great to worship with you. Just two reminders. One, we do have our drive-through communion today from 12 noon till 2 p.m., so I encourage you to come for that. And then we've got our voters meeting, just kind of a brief update at 1120 on Zoom. God's richest blessings with you. Have a great and wonderful week.